Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Okay. Donkey Kong. Incoming! Hello, Internet. Today is March 31st, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TV, things we watch in front of screens, in front of our faces, all over the place. I am Malengo at Rambling Mango, and as usually, we have Sorga Sorgatron Media. Oh, I'm over here, here in uh, Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios, ready to talk some movies with you, Malengo. Very nice, very nice. We also have uh, our New York Connection. How's it going, Mad Mike? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. It's nice. It's a nice another podcast day, and it's all good. It's all good, Malenka. Also joining us is Alex. How's it going, Alex? Hi, guys. Welcome, I just Alex. To Yay! Say, I just want to let you guys know I'm here as a teaser for the upcoming spinoff series, Fear: The Rambling Movie Minute, coming this summer. So we're going to draw media. Nice. <laughs> I'm very looking forward to that series. Also in studio, uh, Ashley, how's it going? Hola, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing well. <laughs> Ashley, what's our uh, what's our trailer of the week? This week we're going to talk about Pixels with Adam Sandler, Peter Dinklage, and a whole lot of amazing people. And quite frankly, I think it looks brilliant. I cannot wait to see this. I, I think it's going to be a good one to see in theaters. Looks like it has great action. A lot of comedy. And like I said, I've said this before and I'll say it a million times more. Anything with Peter Dinklage, I will watch. And I do mean anything. You you, you, you saw Knights of Badass them, didn't you? <laughs> so what do you guys think? I love it. I, I don't care that it's Adam Sandler and all the other guys. I think it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. I think it's... I, I feel like uh, this could be... Uh, like, it feels like it could be Ghostbusters of this generation a little bit, you know. Um, maybe that's a little high for, you know, the guys that are in it. But mm-hmm. um, I, and plus, like, Adam Sandler's been on a run of bad movies that nobody cares about, at least. He has, you know? yeah. And, and whether they're good or bad movies, just nobody cared about them. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens when you get a little bit of box office, you know, strength behind something like this you know obviously they got the budget and the special effects and everything behind something like this um and, and it really feels like a live action record ralph i think i heard that from somebody else maybe you mike um but yeah it looks the humor seems to be in the right place uh out, out of the trailer I, i'm just excited that we're actually going to see donkey kong throwing barrels from the empire state building <laughs> yes honestly even if the movie is awful I'm going to go see it because the effects look amazing in it. I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I'm I'm easily entertained as it is, but <laughs> it's also the first Adam Sandler movie that I've not heard a lot of people necessarily complaining about because mm-hmm. I had Adam Sandler, so I know it can't be too terrible. <laughs> you mean people throwing up in their mouths because it's Adam Sandler? Aww. I like Adam the Sandler. Gr- the Grown Ups <laughs> movies were not terrible, and Hotel Transylvania was actually really good. That was, uh, that was okay. That was okay. Use that. He was a voice character. <laughs> voice acting is acting, Malengo. Oh. No. Um, he also did Eight Crazy Nights. That was horrible. I love that movie. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm worried about this movie. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be fun, but I also feel like it has the potentially potential to be really bad. Ashley, you had something to say? The thought totally <laughs> escaped oh, no. my mind. <laughs> 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 you came back to me in a rush, and I was like... She's by pixels. They're eating away at her. And I did have something to say, but the thought completely escaped my mind. So give me a second and come back to me. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, you know, actually, I, I remembered. So I was just going to say, Adam Sandler's his some of his better movies are his dramas. Mm-hmm. I, I love his dramas. So like f- even funny people, I mean, a dramedy. I think uh, he does better when he's mixing comedy with drama. This is true. Funny People is an amazing movie. I love it. I love it so much. You either love it or you hate it. I, I think some people don't quite get it for some reason, but it just makes sense 
it makes sense to me. So I, yeah, I relate to it. Yeah, I, re I really enjoyed Click. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who oh, doesn't? I hated I Click. <laughs> Click was fun. See, this is what I mean. I, I, I'm easily entertained, but I, I, I like Click. It was, it was a good movie. I Click was super depressing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you, well, did you like, cry at the end too? Surprisingly depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, it, it completely yeah. went a different direction than I thought it was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you people. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, Malengo, that the rest hey. of us have compassion oh, for people Excuse on screen. Me. What do you mean, you people? Art <laughs> should be appreciated. <laughs> you other movie-going demographic. Yeah, appreciate All right, movie context. snob. <laughs> <laughs> Sorg, speaking of snobs, um, how did it go in the box office? Um, well, the snobs did not come out this weekend, or they did to a point with a uh, home getting fifty-two thousand dollars. No, million. Oh, move the comma. Uh, <laughs> home got surprisingly fifty-two million dollars. This is the what was that purple alien movie that we were talking about? Um, that I I don't know. It, it, it got people out, but again, I think it's one of those things where, well, I guess it did have a little competition for the kids, but it was a new thing for the kids, is my take on it. Um, the other one, Get Hard with Will Ferrell, that I actually passed on free tickets last last week, because i like, ah, it's Will Ferrell, but it's Kevin Hart. Um, so, <laughs> can't wait for the Netflix on that one, um, but... I, it, it came in second at thirty-three million. Uh, you know, respectable divergent. Uh, you know, dropping to number three at twenty-one. That's not too bad. Cinderella still going to seventeen million, and it follows yes. at number five. Ashley. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They did that just for me. And it's actually Wide playing. Just and we share that it's actually playing this week in the Hollywood, right, right over here in Dormont. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, 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 it's getting around. So you'll have some opportunities, especially if you're in, in our area over here. So Malengo, you can go see that with me. Yes, this will. is this is the the ghost STD movie, yes. right? That's right. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we should we should definitely go see that. And yeah, um, hey, uh, sorry, just real quick, Divergent and Cinderella for people that are caught up on the numbers, both had a drop of over fifty one percent. So yes, a lot of people went to see Kevin Hart and listen to Rihanna. What? Well, they went to see Lilo and Sheldon. She's one of the voices. That's what it was. Lilo and Sheldon. Lilo. Lilo and Sheldon. That's that's that movie. <clears throat> Alex, did you go to see any of these movies? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. That's just a, that's the way you gotta know. be. I, I'm I'm usually I've been kind of busy on weekends, but I'm I'm excited to watch Home. Personally, I I I, I do like those kind of uh, family type animated movies, mm -hmm. even if it, even if the main character is. Sheldon as an alien. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. I can do cute. Well, for DreamWorks, in our first story in the rundown, uh, Home was a lifesaver for them. Because apparently, their their last couple movies did not do as well as expected. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it seems like after trying to see what their, their last... I don't I know what their one last of, movie One of them, How to Train Your Dragon 2? Yeah, but... Um, They've had a couple. Sins, was right? talking about uh, not um, animated. No, not not original movies. So like Fresh Out of the Gate, not sequels. Yeah, exactly. Mm, okay. So yeah, with this bringing in like fifty nine point three million, um, this apparently is good for them. Yeah. I'm trying. To, I had my notes on what their last movie was that did not do well. I think the last movie that that actually caused layoffs was uh, the sequel for, yeah, the last film, Penguins of Madagascar, which overall grossed $83 million, and it was their second worst tally in their 17 films. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I think this is awesome because it's a black lead, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I had to be swayed. Like, I still haven't seen it. I will now go see it because I've heard some really positive reviews, but I don't know. I don't know if that's saying something about their PR department, where they just. I had no. In, I mean, did, none of us had interest to go see this movie, right? We also, most of us, not have kids, so <laughs> there's that. I think that changes. I'm not it. big on animation anyway. I'm just. I'm not. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, I don't mind animation. It's just the more I saw, like when I f- saw the first preview, it looked okay. The more I saw the movie, the more I, the more I kind of didn't want to go see it. I had the exact like the exact same view. The first the first trailer I saw, I don't even remember what movie I saw it with. But I was like, huh, that's a funny concept. Like I could get around that. And then they kind of overplayed that theme a lot. And then as like the subsequent trailers came out, I just got less and less interested. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like I'll go see this. Probably not for full price, obviously. I might actually just wait till it comes out in a red box. Yeah, red box movie for sure. Seems like it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to skip the next story real quick. We'll come back to it. Because keeping on the same theme of animated movies, how do you guys feel about a live-action Mulan? I honestly don't think I've ever seen Mulan. Same here. I, I haven't either. Are you guys serious? All right, well... I have. <laughs> it, I have. Yes, that, yes. That and a bunch of other Disney movies were my childhood. Um, I was going to say... Uh, so this was, up, this was actually a topic I was definitely interested in talking about because... A lot of these uh, animated films really were like my childhood. Mm-hmm. So seeing like Cinderella as a live action was one thing. Uh, seeing Mulan, I'm kind of of two minds about this one. Uh, on the one hand, it changes weird, you know. Um, like, I guess especially because one of the things that I really enjoyed about the animated movies were the uh, which one? The, the musical numbers and You've got a situation where, like, with uh, Cinderella, I have a question for Mad Mike. Yes. How many songs were in the live-action Cinderella movie? Zip zero. Exactly. That's Mike. That's, I mean, I don't know if it's a minor concern or a major concern of mine, but it is a concern because that was a lot of what I liked about the Disney animated films. Now, that's a good point. Uh, Yeah, that's a good point. I think the music is what you really take with you after the movie is done. Yeah, I mean that's, that's yes. and, yeah. and the other thing you really take away with you with Disney movies, um, like in Cinderella, the animated one of my favorite things was Gus and Jacques, the lovable mm-hmm. mice that mm-hmm. sing Cinderella and make her dress for her and you know mm-hmm. talk. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, in the live action movie, they kind of squeaked a little bit, and that was basically it. Like, I haven't seen Mulan, but I know Eddie Murphy is Mushu, a yes. wise-cracking dragon. Yes. It seems now, like if you don't have that in the live-action version, you're losing a lot of the fun. Yeah. Now, on the it, other it, hand... It sounds like G.I. Jane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, that, cause that's the other thing. Like, on the other hand, I, I'm kind of curious to see if this is a live-action movie, if that means that maybe this is a little bit more serious, a little bit more dramatic considering like kind of the main topic like the main content of the story is very much serious uh that said uh, kind of going back to the music i'm definitely it's just not going to feel the same without uh i'll how how what's that one called about being a man it's uh, i'll make a man out of oh, you oh i'll make a man out of you there we go it's just not going to yeah it's just not going to feel the same without i'll make but otherwise, it'll, it'll it'll I think it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, some some random like perspective. I mean, they had Alice in Wonderland, um, last year's Maleficent, both huge movies. I I don't remember did Maleficent have any singing in it? Like I don't. Well, remember. Maleficent was more about the villain and not about Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, so. yeah it was yeah. a it was a big story change from the they animated the, film. Yeah, they turned the villain into the into an antihero of sorts. Like, I don't know, as as this thing goes, because they're making a crap load of money off this, um, it looks like in development, uh, the next one up is Beauty and the Beast, and that's one that I could definitely get behind, that especially be since Emma Watson might be uh, the lead in that one, starring oh, her. She's already, she's already said that she's in it. Yeah, so that, that, that's confirmed. That's confirmed, so that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I see... I understand the upward trend. Like these movies are going to make money. I, when you compare it to our childhood, just like Alex said, with there being no music, like it kind of takes something away. But I like Maleficent, 
Cinderella, I did see Cinderella, and um, eh, it was okay. But I'm very interested to see what they do with Beauty and the Beast. Well, Cinderella, uh, Cinderella had a little bit of music in it, but it wasn't like any of the big musical numbers. Like, you didn't get Bippity Boppity Boo. You didn't get a uh, Cinderella. Like, you got her singing. And I think you can do that with Beauty and the Beast a little bit easier because it is just Belle singing through the town and yeah. everyone calling her a weirdo, which kind of works like you can you can still do that and it wouldn't seem as out of place and i don't know i just hope they address the elephant in the room why all of the uh all of the beast servants and everything have been turned into household items (laughs) and what happened to chip that made him have a crack in his head i need to know these kind of things yeah that's gonna be it's going to be interesting to see how they, they pull that off in live action. Uh, we're all, they also, in this article by Variety, they're saying that uh, Disney's also releasing a live action of the Jungle Book. So I have no that, idea where that's going to go. That's something new, though. They, they did that like 20 years ago. Yeah, there, it's, a, it's a new live action. Yeah, they're, they're, doing it in, uh, they're doing it in the same studio that they did the Harry Potter movies in. Oh, cool. So there's going to be a little bit of CG in it, but I think it's a lot. I think it's going to be a lot of practical stuff, too. Nice. Barbie is singing um, bear. Were you going to say something, Sorg? Barbie is singing bear. I don't care how live action it, it is. Singing bear. <laughs> and it should be John Goodman. It's not going to be, no. but it should be. No. Uh, just brings back the fact that why don't we have a tailspin? Movie. Because ah. suck my hey, you know what? We bring them back DuckTales. So maybe if DuckTales come back, they'll go through that entire cycle of 80s again. Mm. And we'll get Jim Dale's Rescue Rangers. We'll get some Tailspin. Maybe gummy some bears. Darkwing Duck. Gum, gummy Bears. Yes. Exactly. My, my kingdom for a Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers Avengers crossover cartoon. My kingdom for that. Because you can have Squirrel Girl and Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers fight Ultron. It'd be great. <laughs> hey, so Trevor <laughs> Noah is stated to succeed John Stewart on The Daily Show. Yeah. I am so pumped about this for obvious reasons, but yes, this guy is funny. If you have not seen the stand up, I think he has a, one of his shows on Netflix, I think. Actually, yeah, it is on Netflix. Is it? I want to look that up. But, um,. Yeah, this I, I like the way the story broke. I have not heard a lot of hater news, but uh, uh, Mad Mike, you're saying that some people were getting on him about some uh, some tweets he was. Uh, yeah, as, as soon as it was announced that he was taking over for John Stewart, of course, everyone you know who has a Twitter account went back into his feed and looked for something that they can get up in arms about, and then they don't remember that hey, he's a comedian. Comedians make sometimes culturally insensitive jokes. That's how comedy works. Like, I just watched the roast of Justin Bieber last night, and they made a 9-11 joke. Like, that's just going to happen. They're comedians. His, right. his, his special on Netflix is Trevor Noah, African-American. Oh. There you go. How meta. <laughs> In case he couldn't tell. Well, he also is from he also is from South Africa, so right. that's probably that, that why. is true. Right, I, I have added it to my list on Netflix. I'm going to check this out. No, I'm yeah. interested. His whole his whole bit on how black is the is the new cool <laughs> was freaking hilarious. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm I'm excited. Uh, Alex, do you, do you care? I mean, does this strike a chord? Is this you something care? you would um, like to see? Would you watch this? Well, I'm gonna be honest. I've never seen a stand-up with with Trevor Noah, but since you suggested oh, that's okay. that to watch on Netflix, now I know what to watch for. Um, I, I, the, I the, do. The only the only the, the other thing I wanted to address was just like what what Mike was saying about the tweets, um, and it's like so the fact that you know he's a comedian. Yes, uh, I think the big problem that they have <laughs> is that they confused. The Daily Show with being an actual news show. <laughs> They've been doing oh, that ever since John please. Stewart took down Crossfire. <laughs> yes, that's but that's kind of my point. It's like they they're forgetting that this is for all intents and purposes satire comedy. But yeah, um, I'm 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 interested to see what what the Daily Show is going to look like with uh, 
Trevor Noah. It'll be it'll be interesting for sure. I don't think it's going to change that much, honestly. No, no. I, I, th- I think they have a good format. They have a good staff of writers and everything. It's really going to, like, John Stewart and Jason Jones and Samantha B all leaving. That sucks. That really sucks. I'm, I'm disappointed about that. But uh, it should be interesting to see who else they get to pick up the slack when uh, he takes over. Um, speaking of picking up the slack, Transformers... Hey! Oh, no. Do we have to? No. This Do is we have to? House. Do we have to? Now listen. Okay, so the story is that uh, because this is going around, everybody thinks that they can sword, pull us sword. off. Read, read the entire the entire headline. Okay, this. The Verge is not. <laughs> I, I'm not saying I'm excited about this, but I think it's interesting that we're, we're that this is happening. So Verge's headline on this is: We're about to get the Transformers movie universe no one asked for. <laughs> um. Wow. I mean, it's not like it's not like they haven't made money on this. Um, but but well, this is the trend. Everybody's going to see what Marvel's doing. Uh, DC is getting into this uh, universe building kind of situation. And of course, I mean, this is this is the perfect kind of material. I really kind of wish they started from scratch, maybe. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, like Marvel. <laughs> yeah, like Marvel did. Um, you know, but but. I don't know, like, like, okay, so the one does universe thing, but I can't see you putting out a Transformers movie that doesn't have Optimus Prime. Like, it's uh, kind of the de facto thing for you to do. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on in the history of the Transformers universe. Uh, we can have a Beast Wars movie. I don't know, um, but I definitely, certainly not a Dinobots movie by the way they were uh, uh, introduced to this. But um, oh, could you imagine if they didn't all hail a Megatron movie? I, I no, I, I want to see a Beast Wars movie. Yeah, I would be. I want to see a Beast really? Wars movie. I want to see Beast Wars movie with Angelia Jolie as Black Arachnia. That's Ooh. it. That's it. That's all I want to okay. see. Okay, I could dig that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but uh, but I mean, Ghostbusters is doing this, and they they they, they also say you know Spider Man getting rolled into this. Frankenstein. I didn't know about Frankenstein trying to go uh, movie universe on this this situation. But I mean. It works. I mean, this is the kind of thing. I mean, it's not like this is a new thing. Like uh, Kevin Smith movies did this years ago, right? Yeah, and, and Tarantino's movies do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, but there's one thing: if you do it knowing you're going to do it from the outset, if you try and shoehorn it in afterwards, it doesn't work. Like DC announced. Two more villains for Suicide Squad. Right. They announced one more hero for Batman v Superman. Like they're trying to put literally everything into these two movies and then have it explode into a bunch of really other crappy movies. You have to have somebody really, really good. This is like any other company of a massive scale. You have to have a good boss heading this up and distributing in all this all this information. And I, I. DC doesn't have the track record, I don't think, to prove that they can do this. And I cannot imagine a Michael Bay version of this universe. It's called world building. It's not called building and exploding. Like, like you have to start with a base, Mm -hmm. and then you can build upwards from there. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the reason that no one is questioning that, hey, there's going to be a Luke Cage series on Netflix, and yeah, he's going to know who Tony Stark is. Like, no one is questioning that now because this started back in 2008. Like, it started a while ago, and it they've built up from there. Like, they've acknowledged that, that all of this stuff exists in the same world. The only thing that's kind of outside that sphere is the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's because they're way out in outer space. Right. And right. even then, the Collector knows as Guardians. Right. Uh, the biggest question asked is, did we bring this upon ourselves? My answer is yes. I agree. No, no, I no, no, no. This is no, Hollywood no, being no. Hollywood. We are going to keep getting this because they're moving into other, they're, they're going into other markets. They got China involved now. This, <laughs> these kind of movies are going to keep happening as long as the box office num- numbers stay big. Yeah, and I feel like the people tr- keep, you know, talking about them and asking for them. 
So, I don't know if anyone was asking for a transfer. For another well, maybe not that, but in general, I'm just this asking, concept in general. I'm just asking genre. for better Transformers movies. I don't think it's going to happen. I yeah, that no, I, I unfortunately <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, so I mean, at least we got a pretty adequate uh, Ninja Turtles that at least I had fun with, right? So I'm going to pretend you didn't even say that, and I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> my most beloved movies from my childhood have horrible Rotten Tomato skills, Malengo. So, I was, oh man, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, messing up our childhoods, going back to the Disney movies. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. your consistent world. Yeah, speaking of messing up our childhoods, why don't we have a reboot movie yet? Because you can't have an article that's saying they're going to reboot, reboot. <laughs> that's why, Malengo. That's why. Uh, but, but Malengo, there's no reboot movie, but there's going to be a reboot of Coach. Uh, see, no. Uh, the what? world makes no sense. <laughs> what? The world just doesn't make sense. It hurts my common sense that The Odd Couple is apparently uh, doing well as a reboot. And it's not a good show. That's what I keep hearing. But it's not. It's not. You don't have to be a good show to be successful on CBS, apparently. Yeah, of course, because they're just going to keep making money. I was somehow going to ask Ashley this question, but I'm just going to ask you, Sorg. I am hungry for pizza. (laughs) (laughs) Well, why don't you ask Ashley that question? Because Ashley's here, and and she gets to have pizza. She gets to join in on the pizza party every week. Every week, she's eating it all. Yes. I already, I already did. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I did. So, I did. So fly. You're missing out. You're all missing out. <laughs> Every Tuesday, I look forward to it. That's right. Every Tuesday, uh, the, the, we enjoy, and everybody that comes in the studio throughout the evening, because we do several shows here mm-hmm. uh, at Sorgatron Media I'm here at Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh. And uh, one of the ways that we get the people to come out, and some people, this is their, there's this, this podcast day. It's podcast day here, and there's people, Woo! Wheels, he doesn't have the slice on Broadway because he's all the way down by California, PA, but he did tweet earlier a picture of the pizza he did get, so he didn't feel left out. But if you are in the Be- Beachview area, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, if you're coming off that exit um, for Carnegie, PA, uh, you can hit up Slice on Broadway. You can check out about uh, more about them at SliceOnBroadway.com. Uh, mm. they, it's delicious. It's gourmet pizza from scratch. Oh no funny gosh, stuff. No funny stuff in this, Malango. Pure pizza awesomeness. It's from Slice on Broadway. The people provide pizza to podcasters in Pittsburgh. Um, and they've been providing it for uh, well over a year at this point. So please let them know that you heard about them on here. You want to check them out uh, here. Um, you know, uh, If you're around the town, if, if you're getting off the train, the the T-line uh, down here in the South Hills, uh, let them know you heard about them here on the Rambling Movie Minute or somewhere else, on, or just in general from Sorgatron Media. Malanga. Hey, that's me. I'm yes. back. Best picture ever. <laughs> um, what are we watching? Hey, <laughs> That's a good question. Right. I like your question, Malenga. What are we watching? That is a great question. Yeah, it is a good question. Ben, Mike, what are we watching? Oh, my God. I watched a lot of movies this weekend. I watched. Uh, I went to the movie theater, and I saw Insurgent. Um, it was interesting. <clears throat> I I I haven't read the books, so I don't I didn't know what was going to happen, and yet I still kind of felt I knew what was going to happen. Um, I mean it was it was a fun flick, uh, lots of good effects, you know it was not at, not as good as Hunger Games, better than Twilight. I'm gonna go look it right in the middle of those two franchises. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean if you've seen the first one and you like the first one. Then definitely go see a second one. It was a good addition to the series, and um, I'm excited for the third one. I'm probably gonna go see that because they left on a really good cliffhanger. Hmm. And um, I also saw Top Five, which is the Chris Rock movie that came out uh, earlier this year or late last year, one of those. And uh, it's about kind of a comedian slash actor who um, he was an alcoholic and he stopped doing funny movies and everyone kept asking him why he stopped doing funny movies. And it turned out to be a really funny movie, actually. Yeah, uh, it, was, I, it was a pretty good movie. I liked it. Yeah. I enjoyed it a hell of a lot more than I thought I was going to. 
considering I didn't know what the movie was. I thought mm-hmm. it was kind of like a documentary pick, but it's definitely not. Even though it just seems like Chris Rock is playing Chris Rock. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's got a really interesting take on reality TV shows, which is fun. And I mean, it has Jerry Seinfeld making it rain at a strip club. Oh yeah, it's, I forgot about that. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of the movie. I'm like, that just looks so out of place. It's amazing. Uh, and Plus, uh, it has the beautiful uh, Rosario, uh, Dawson. Rosario Dawson and oh, the beautiful gosh. Gabrielle Union. Both mm. very, very <laughs> well done. They yes. they kind of play two sides of the uh, love interest coin, which is nicely done. They're both really, really fun in it. Uh, Gabrielle Union plays like like a Kardashian, essentially. And it's really, really funny. Like, because there's a moment where she just gets kind of real on the phone and there's no cameras. It's amazing. It's really, really good. Do you feel like uh, J.B. Smooth is just, like, I feel like he's been doing a lot of these roles where he's just that guy. J.B. Smooth was fantastic. (laughs) He was fantastic. Wait, isn't that... Who's that guy? That's not the guy playing uh, Johnny Storm, is it? No, no, that's uh, Michael B. Jordan. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, but J.B. Smooth is a comedian. <laughs> there are a lot of comedians in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, um, Tracy Morgan was in it. Oh, God, I'm just trying to think of all the other ones. I just saw it. Uh, there's so many. Um, the um, woman from SNL got cast in the Ghostbusters movie. I can't think of her name. Polar? Amy Polar? No. Uh, uh, I can't. I can't. Kristen Wiig? Yeah. Hmm? I, I, can't, I can't think of who you're talking about. <laughs> um... Yeah, I I can't think of her name, but she's she's absolutely hilarious in this movie. Like Whoopi Goldberg's in the movie, Adam Sandler's in the movie. They have cameo wow. roles. Uh, there, it's a really it's a really fun movie. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. Huh. I also saw Edge of Tomorrow, which you bastards told me was a good movie. It is a good movie. <laughs> no, no, you lied. You lied, uh, Malengo. It's not even a good video game. It's a great it's movie. Even, nope. No, one it's not. Best, uh, one of the top ten best movies of 2014. That is a lie, sir. You know, what, you know, what one through nine is Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, what ten is anything but Edge of Tomorrow. Um, oh, it, was, it was bad. It was so bad. Um, it was like if you watched Groundhog's Day, but you only saw the last five minutes of Groundhog's Day, and you don't know how he knows all the things he knows. Because they decide to skip that part of the plot because they just assume, oh, he's gone through this before. We didn't get to see it, but he's gone through it before. I assume, like I assume there's a 30-hour long cut of this movie where he's gone through all these days so many times to where he knows what's going on. Instead, he just looks like a psychic. Um, but moving on to something else I saw that I did like... Uh, <laughs> The new Inspector Gadget cartoon came out on Netflix. I saw that. And I, watched I saw that. Yeah. I've watched the first couple episodes. It's cute. It's cute. If you if you were a fan of Inspector Gadget back in the day, you know it's not a very good cartoon. But it's in the same <laughs> vein. Um, they have good voice acting. It's not it's not Don Knotts, but it's as close as you can get, I think. Um, it, it, it's fun. Like... It, each episode is broken up into like a 15 minute chunk, kind of like Teen Titans Go. Hmm. So there's two cartoons per episode. Uh, it's it's fun. I, I enjoyed it. And Tara Strong is Penny. So if if it, something has Tara Strong in it, I'm at least going to give it a shot. For those don't know, played uh, Harley Quinn and uh, uh, what, uh, Sparkles? In the, something? in the Batman video game, she's Twilight Sparkle in My Little Pony. She's. Basically, if there's any cartoon you've liked in the past 20 years, Tara Strong has most likely been on it. I like the way in uh, Netflix description they, they state, this show is goofy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a really good article. I, I forget where I found it, but they were, they were discussing the differences between this version and the old version. How, how uh, nobody can watch the old version because it's so slow. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, oh. Yeah, and so they kind of made it more fast paced. They updated the technology because she had a smart Penny had a smartphone before anybody had a smartphone. Now everybody does, and now there's like this what a holographic computer of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess there's a, a Doctor Claw's kid is a part of this as well. Um, uh, Doctor Claw's what? nephew. Nephew. Since, yeah. I'm just gonna since say he's a kid. Yeah, since Penny has Penny is Gadget's niece. 
Um, uh. His name is Talon, I believe, and Talon is Claw's nephew. Hmm. The first episode is actually him infiltrating HQ, pretending he's a recruit. So and it's kind of funny. In case you do need throwback, they do have Inspector Gadget 2 on uh, Netflix right now on streaming. Oh, no, you so, don't need to see that. No, though. you don't need to bother with that one. Get the first one, at least for the sights and sounds of Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I or just watch the that. cartoon if you don't want to see how far Matthew Broderick has fallen. Mm, from Godzilla to that. <laughs> uh, Ashley, what about you? Is there anything you've been watching? I was so excited about an X-Files reboot that I had... Um, some time to watch one of my favorite X-Files episodes, which is called Home. It's actually one of the scariest television episodes ever of, of any series. And I, this you can go online and look it up, and I think a lot of people would agree. Um, it's about an inbred family that live in Pennsylvania. And so um, they. it's just about how this family lives. And um, there's a scene, a very very, very creepy scene where they actually go and they kill um, the sheriff of this town, which has maybe, I don't know, 500 people in it. It's very, very small. So everybody knows everyone. No one locks their doors. Um, but there's a scene where they go and they kill the sheriff and his wife. And it's and there's a song play. I actually forget the name of it, but it's a Johnny Mathis song. Um, if you ever hear that song again, you will never think of it the same way after seeing this episode. It's I'm not going to spoil everything else, but just just watch it. It's it's good if you're an X-Files fan. Nice. Yeah. So they, that's what I need. I need that, like, what are the top episodes I should watch of the mm-hmm. early seasons since I was a latecomer into it? Because mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to sit through all of it. I just no, 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 don't no. have the patience to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I found the trailer for it over here. Uh, but this is it. definitely one I'm going to have to add on then. It's, uh... <laughs> it, I still have not seen anything. I remember watching this when I was 11. or ho- However old I was when it came out. I think 97. Mm-hmm. But, um, Yeah. Nice. It's awesome. I, Wait, I, I, what was that episode title? It's called Home, which is actually the name of the town. I'm sure it's a fictional town in the show. And then also it has a lot to do with that being their home and the fact that they did not want to have anyone take them away from it. So Does it have also, Rihanna and Jim Parsons in it? Unfortunately, it does not. <laughs> but we can always tell them for the oh upcoming my God. episodes to include you guys. X Files reboot. Mm-hmm. X Files episode name Home. New movie about home featuring an alien. The truth is out there. We solved it. Love the connection. Good we job. Solved it. Good job. Alex, uh, what were you watching, or what should we be watching? All right. Um, first of all, I want uh, on what Ashley was saying. It's like for me, one of the scarier episodes of X Files was the host. Oh yeah. The one about the uh, blue guy that. I haven't seen Home. I'll check that out. Uh, I've been watching. I actually just finished catching up on uh, Agents, of, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. today. Uh, it's getting good. Been trying to get caught up on that. I love that show so much. Um, the other big thing that I've been watching uh, is Walking Dead. And this past Sunday was the season finale. Um, I don't know who else saw the season finale, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But I, I really enjoyed it. I like watching this whole season and how the story has been building up mm-hmm. has just been really interesting and kind of like the different turns in the, the character development, like with the main guys, especially is just was a sight to see. Um, and I'm loving like some of the callbacks to like earlier seasons, let's say. Uh, I was explaining to my mom when we were watching it on Sunday, like who one guy in particular was, but mm-hmm. yeah, they, it was very fun. They do, uh, pop, they, they, they do pop up. Like there's that one guy that was following them for a while. I can't remember. If, I can't remember. If they connected, uh, before I, I, before the mid season when I was watching. Um, mm-hmm. but it, like, there's a lot of that, like, well, I don't know who this guy is. You know, and it takes a little right. bit to be like, oh, that's the guy from that episode that was in the house that they yeah. were helping out and lost his son and everything, you know. And it was just like, oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. so that's where I'm having a problem. I need like a little bit, it's not as bad, but a little bit of that Game of Thrones. Oh, this is the guy from that thing that time, you know, because everybody really kind of looks nobody's really kind of sticks out, you know, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in that instance. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm also really excited for the uh this the Walking Dead spinoff that's coming mm-hmm. out in the summer. This looks oh, interesting. Man. 
Um, there's two things about it. Like, the fact that it's set in Los Angeles, so, like, it's going to be like a West Coast kind of feel to everything. But on top of that, they've been talking about how this is actually going to, like, at least touch on uh, what caused mm-hmm. the zombie apocalypse, if you will. I was like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very interested in seeing what they're actually going to explain, like, because it, there was a lot of stuff that, you know, because I, I, this was... It's kids with measles at Disneyland, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So those damn kids of measles at Disneyland that caused it. We're going to see Tommy yeah. Mickey Mouse running around. Uh, but yeah, because, uh, like, that was something else I was talking to my mom about, was just the fact that, like, there's, like, because, you know, with that pilot episode of the original series, you know, you have... Obviously, you have Rick waking up from his coma in and being like kind of in the middle of everything going down. So it'll be interesting to see like here are these events that lead to what we kind of. I, I almost want to say in the same vein of uh, Better Call Saul. Like I don't know how much of that <laughs> is planning to Breaking Bad per se, but it's just the idea of the sort of prequel sorts, you know. Better Call Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> nice um all right it looks like we are way over uh but quickly you've soared Did you uh, watch yeah i well mostly is wrestling 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 uh all kinds of wrestlemania and uh i watched the flintstones wwe uh video how I, was that sword uh, it's not as good as the scooby-doo one i'll tell you that much Okay, so um, and also, involved. like, I, I just, it just, it, it, it's, I'm used to Flintstones having really crappy animation for one thing. And, uh, sorry, dog's going nuts in the background there. Um, but, uh, also, like, like the voices, like, Barney Rubble was nowhere near the Barney Rubble I remember. You know, it, it was, it, like, they didn't even try on that one. Um, but, uh, other than that, I, I like kind of, uh, a little bit the crossover. Uh, it feels like this is how any indie wrestling, uh, thing starts. It was, it was it was it was real weird, real real weird. And also Sork. and also, if you watch back, um, I don't know if it's the wake of this whole blackfish and the uh, the the Barnum Bailey elephants, but I feel really bad and empathetic towards every one of those 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 uh, 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 dinosaurs <laughs> and everything that's helping them out. You're just like you just like especially like they especially when they got to the um, the uh, the quarry, like they're mm-hmm. like torturing those animals. You know, those brontosauruses, mm-hmm. like, and they really kind of accented the point to it. I don't know if that was an intention or what happened there. That's always, that's always been a thing on Flintstones, though, if you watch the old episodes back. Because, like, their, um, their garbage disposal, like, they always mm-hmm. make a point to open up the doors. And it's like, meh, it's the living. Yeah, and they do like, that. But there's just general, like, like, they are choking the brontosaurus to make them do something. Isn't the theory, though, that those animals are, like, paid? I have no recollection. I'm not of sure. I mean, that. So I mean, Dino's kind of sentient, and there are a lot of dinosaurs that talk. Yeah, yeah. But Sorg, so, I have one question about the WWE Flintstones movie. Hmm. Did they make a Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin reference? Because nope. those names are right there. Nope. Nope. Didn't have God, them. CM no, Punk still all over the, all over this. Um. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. So, so they'll go. So they'll use the Boulder Twins, right? But not the Rock versus Stone Cold. Nope. Nope. The Rock. But it's like everybody's got a name except for the Undertaker. Okay. Uh, anyways. <laughs> but it was okay. That's because he's I, the Undertaker, so Unless you're on. like an Uber fan and love the Flintstones as well of WWE, I, I don't recommend picking this up. I just did because I had a Amazon certificate. So I'm for my birthday. I'm like, yeah, hey, it's my birthday. I'm gonna get the WWE thing. Um, but no, I, I I definitely prefer the the, the Scooby Doo one a lot better, especially the side story of how the how Sin Cara got like his origin. And not being able to talk and everything that, that was pretty great. That whole that whole origin of Sankara was essentially Lucha Underground. It's better than anything they've done in WWE with the character. So with the real person. <laughs> so that's my take. Malango? Uh yeah, I watched Cinderella. It was eh. I got cut up on Better Call Saul. Yay. And The Last Man on Earth is surprising me. Um also with that, this weekend we have the Furious Seven. 
What a really great name for that. So that's what's in theaters. And there's, there's going to be a Furious 8. I know there will be. Aren't and you excited? Nine, and a 10. Is that actually slated? Because their, yeah. because their be freaking tag says The Last Ride. Liar. That's they've been billing the last two or three. Yeah, they, you know, it, yeah. It's, they always say it's the last one. It's, it's always it's one. always one more time, right, guys? This yeah. is the one, it's right, one guys? one more time until it doesn't make money anymore. That's you right. know it's going to end with a baby walker, or <laughs> his character will have a kid, and that kid will and be... And they'll watch him grow up. Yes. That's how yeah. we get That's how we get I, to 10. And he's doing crazy stunts in one of those power wheels. Yeah. yeah. I, just, I just can't wait for Furious 9, Tokyo or Driftier. Like I, I know I said that last week, but I can't wait for that. Yeah, there's a there's a movie series that already did the universe thing before it was cool. Oh man! Hey, with, uh, so yes. uh, Alex, where can we find you if people want to follow you um, and see what's going on? You now? can find me a lot of places. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you can go to my website at alexandercars.com. Uh, that's K A H R S. Alexandercars.com. Uh, I do graphic design. I do a lot of other stuff as well. I'm a WordPress enthusiast, as I like to say. Uh, you can follow me at Alexander Cars on the Twitters, um, where I'll talk about just about anything, because uh, I'm that kind of guy. So. Love it. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been awesome having you on the show. Thanks for coming on, too. Uh, and, and, I don't know, actually, and I don't know if we clarify this. Alex also wrote uh, yeah. several great uh, reviews. Uh, over on the the former site, I don't think I brought over to the new one. Uh, yeah, but he's been helping out there as well. Yeah, and I'm planning on bringing more as soon as I I can sit through some more movies <laughs> in the near future. But yeah, awesome, Ashley. What about you? Where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Don't Mace with Me. So yes, find me, follow me, and make me a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey. the first time someone has said, follow me to make me happy. <laughs> uh, Mad Max. Or Mad, Mad, Mad Max, Max. Oh, yeah. Geez. Mad Max 2015, no. coming to the summer, bitches. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitters. Um, I'm also on the Wrestling Mayhem show and occasionally on Panel Riot with uh, DJ Lunchbox. It's so we're trying to meet his own. There you go. Sorg. Uh, Sorgatronmedia.com, MikeSorg.com if you want to check out everything else going on. So much, I can't even get into it. Um, but, uh, you know, talking about movies whenever I can. I was this close to doing a mini review for the Flintstones WWE thing, but I was like, eh, no. <laughs> I, just, I, I just wasn't up for that one. <laughs> so, uh, but a lot of stuff, fun, uh, a lot of fun stuff going on. And please, uh, if you're interested in all the non wrestling stuff going on, uh, there's a little pop down if you go to sorgatronmedia.com for our newsletter. And from there, you'll get updates about what's going on on this show um, and, uh, and, and other things going on, especially some of my teachings and social media. And, uh, and, and Mike's going to lose it over there on the Hangout. But no. But, uh, uh, and, 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 then, and then I actually do a special thing uh, every Friday. I kind of do, hey, this is the best stuff to check out through the week of everything we do around here. Um, so go sign up for that for a little bit of inside info on what's going on. Well, well, I go. Go before you sign off, quick breaking news. Mm. They've yep. cast Casey Jones in Ninja Turtles too. <gasps> oh, my gosh. We don't need another Ninja Turtles. No, yes, we no, do. no, no, no. I'm actively excited about this because they got Stephen Amell from Arrow. <gasps> oh, I'm in. Okay, you sold me. I'm in. Yep. I'm in. Yep. I don't care if they have lips. I don't care if Michelangelo flirts with April the whole time. I don't care. I'm in. <laughs> well, I'm in. I think some people might care about that one. Uh, I am Malengo at Rambling Mango. At, yes, Rambling Mango on Twitter. Uh, you can def definitely check us out on our Facebook group. Uh, the Rambling Movie Minute, where we like to post everything, movies, news, TV news, everything, random thoughts. Um, but yes, thanks for hanging out with us this week, and uh, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. And until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. 
online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.